Good evening and welcome to Nox Mente. Tonight's guest is Heidi Vandenberg from Ch Channel 27. Heidi, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me on here. I'm You're excited. Welcome. Oh, there's a... Do you hear that, you guys? What? There's like an echo. No, it's you. Hello. We lost Nash. Are you guys hearing the echo? No. No. It's echoing back at me for some reason. Change your Zoom listening device. Your speakers and Zoom. A little up arrow. Change it to like default and or change it to something else and back. Nobody hears an echo. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. We're live, Heidi. This has never <laughs> happened to me before. This is the very first well, time. Me, I'll tell you, astrologically, we've got a couple interesting planets about to go retrograde. <laughs> yeah, Mercury retrograde is about to start, isn't it? Yeah, and we already have Jupiter retrograde, so we're all into a nice, fun, <laughs> week. fun time of Very interesting week, technology. Uh, uh, Nish? Restart, come back into the Zoom, maybe? Hi, everybody in chat. How you doing? I hope everyone's having a great week. I totally screwed up your intro. I meant to say that you were um, tonight's guest. Heidi. <laughs> no, I know. I said Heidi because I was thinking about something else, but I was going to say, um, oh, yeah, Wunder Realtor and uh, Astrologer Extraordinaire, Heidi Vandy. Thank you. I'll edit that back into the... Uh, and I'm back and I hear no echo. By Yay. The way. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Heidi, and everyone okay. listening. Seems I'm like we always get off with the yeah, the live issues. So let's get right into it. Um give us a little bit about your background, Heidi. So the early stuff that we're looking for, like your first memories, the world you grew up in. Um, were you around nature? Did you have a relationship with nature? What kind of things in pop culture may have inspired you? And I'm talking like the earliest stuff you can recall. Well, I actually had kind of, I don't have a real warm and fuzzy story. So I actually grew up in, um, my family, everybody was great. Um, but I did have a brother who was handicapped, had uh, cerebral palsy. So um, there was a lot of fear and like a lot of things with his health that I remember a lot of. Okay. That's where I would say a lot of my, a lot of my issues were from this as a, a child. So I was made fun of a lot as a kid and you know, I had a lot of, and this is all in my astrology chart, which made sense to me and I understood it. My family was close, but my parents worked a lot and um, I, yeah, I was close with Nate. Uh, it's, 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 it's fucking annoying. Um, it's just, it's, okay, it's just so the heart locked up. It went. <laughs> Oofta. I'm sorry. Um, so, am I gathering though that you were creative naturally? That you are. Yes, I was definitely creative. Uh huh. And very athletic, very creative, always. Um, but then I went to school. Kids made fun of me for everything. And then I became rebellious and yes, you know, that's when the, the teenage, that stuff kicked in and, you know, then my chart played out in the little, the dangerous way <laughs> to say the least, but it was always like secret of destructions, you know, it was never, um, it, and I played it out a lot in my relationships. So yeah, but it was very creative. There was not like always drawing, doing things, painting, you know, <clears throat> all of the above. Do you consider yourself, do you still have these outlets, like creative outlets outside of, say, astrology and like whatever your mundane life is? Yeah, I don't really do it as much, but I'm really into music and dance, dancing and like that kind of stuff. Excellent. I, I'm asking these questions because it, it kind of fills in the um, the landscape of the dream to, you know, right brain, left brain, all that. Um so I'm super, this reoccurring dream that ended with the death of your brother is a first 
and all the years I've been talking dreams with people. And um, so I want to, if, if I can, can I ruminate on that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Have you, um, has he shown up in your dreams at all since then? No. So he, he kind of, he left and he's just been wherever he is now and hasn't popped in at all. No. I have a block, like I block all that stuff out. Yeah. Is it still deeply painful? No. When he passed away, that was, it made me feel a lot better. Like it was at peace. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he was having, he was having suffering yeah he had a feeding tube a mindset of an eight month year old couldn't walk talk do anything and he just kept having seizures and they kept trying to fix him and he lived in, i mean it was it was horrible so for me the 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 anxiety and the fear was when he was alive yeah okay thank you for for sharing that that's that's intense um okay so you talked about i also like to get into kind of um, where one stands from, you already mentioned you got very, you're very religious as a young person. Did you transform your ideas of religion and spirituality into something else? Or are you still? Yes. I call it Heideism. <laughs> yes. Well, give yeah. us a little bit of the Heideism. Yeah. So it's basically, I was very religious and I was always a truth seeker, which is why I loved astrology. Cause I went to school for criminal justice, law enforcement, and always obsessed with figuring out secrets, psychological secrets, why people do what, what they do, what makes them tick and, um, and figuring things out. So what, what I found was with astrology and everything and with my way I like to analyze things and information that, you know, that to me, when I started researching religion and stuff, I'll never forget 2012, I was stressed out, anxiety, about to leave my husband, knew I needed to leave my husband, but I thought I was just, I was a mess, okay? And I felt all this crazy anxiety and I was reading that 2012, the Mayan thing or whatever it was. Oh yeah, yes. And I thought I was re reading Revelation and I was reading the Quran. And I was oh, like- Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's the same exact, it was like the same story, you know? I didn't yeah. realize it, I read the whole, like read like five pages of this thing. And um, so that kind of opened up my eyes some more and some more, but- you know, when, when I had a career and I'm making money, I wasn't even thinking about religion, like quite yeah. at all. So after I had my divorce, I had kind of an identity crisis break, you know, one of those, what, what's going on in my life? Why am I so screwed up? Why do I leave everything? Why is my life falling to pieces? And I found astrology. So, um, and I really got into the more Eastern culture, I would say Hinduism. I'm not Hindu, but I like a lot of the, I could, I'll tell you, it really stems to why my brother was the way he was. Um, I couldn't accept that Jesus did this for everybody. Every, J Jesus came down, made him suffer so everybody could have more love or like that didn't add up to me. That story wasn't, you know, sitting in my, in my head very well. And yeah. with the whole karma thing and with Vedic astrology, like the charts, it's all mapped out in the charts. So I could accept it better the why he was in that situation because it was karmically in our chart. We must've done things in a past life. It is what it is. So I had more peace with it. So you know, I believe in past lives, reincarnation. I believe in, um, I believe in God. Nobody knows who he is, what he is, where he comes from, but there is a higher power and a higher source. You do the right thing, make good decisions, try to help people and, you know, have good intentions. You're going to a better place. That's excellent. I like this um, transmutation, if you will, of, of you from young Heidi to where you are now. It definitely, uh, you come in, loud and clear is powerful and with depth of of soul it's very clear i notice it in all your videos and and now talking to you live um let's move in oh okay so there's i don't i usually have my loose outline and for some reason per this show which is a wild one <laughs> i don't know where it is so I, we have a couple other background things we like to ask um, you, you got her sign i Taurus, just, right just gonna ask that sorry i remember what so what sign are you, Heidi? So, well, I'm born September 12th. So I was a Virgo in quotation, right? And no, and I would read Virgo things. And I'm like, I'm not Virgo at all. Like the only thing about me was Virgo-y. I work hard, okay? And <clears throat> so when I found Vedic astrology and I found out I was a Scorpio rising, a Pisces moon and a Leo sun, yeah, that that's why I was sold. So so Vedic was spot on for me and my planets and everything 
And so that's my signs. In my in my heart, I'm a Scorpio rising, Pisces, Moon, Leo, Sun. Excellent. It's funny. I um I don't know a huge amount about. I love Vedic, except for I just haven't had the time to dive deeper into that that realm. So in Western, I'm a Taurus, April 26th. Um, and Leo Moon, Gemini Rising, Eleventh House Sun, all that stuff so but when the little bit I've done with Vedic seems way more um, in tune with how I feel about myself and in the feedback I've received from people in the world about me so I'm making my way to that Vedic side yeah it's so much more like I, I look at it as the western is more of kind of what you strive to be <laughs> like the Sagittarius Virgo that was me it, you know I, it just never mapped even when I read my even when I, and I, like to me, a rising sign is the first house is more important. What's in that first house? Where does the first, yes. it, there's a lot, like the sun sign to me, I don't even like that's, it, it's important where the sun sits in your chart, but I don't look at the sun sign with prominence, unless there's a ton of planets in it or if it's in the first house. I always read my horoscopes by my rising sign or moon sign. Yeah, I do that in that I do too. I, I often have to tell people that the same thing about the sun sign. It's it, it's funny how it became predominant, though. How pe people really just hang their hat on that. They do. It's, <laughs> it's funny. Okay, yeah. and so also another thing because this really, in the end, is a show about consciousness. You know, and dreams are are kind of this area where we all have an opportunity. We all do it, and um, we're all unique in a certain sense. But there's lots of overlap. So um, we always ask if anyone has done psychedelics or um, psychotropic drugs to and have found state, altered states of consciousness in the past via those avenues. Yeah, so I don't, I've never done any drugs to be like that because I have a highly addictive personality. So I stay away from drugs and I've just, for me, I like to be in control. So I don't like to lose control and I've never had it, but I've heard, you know, I have thought about doing it once or twice, but I just, I can never, I've never got around to doing it. Yeah. And, and that's right. A lot of people haven't. So it's my issue has always been control too, although I have done them, but then I would stop when I lose control. I feel like I'm already out there yeah. so much of the time. Way, <laughs> way out there. Yes. I know. I like, I really don't need assistance. So, yeah. all right, let's dive into the, the dream section here. Um, so in general, this is kind of the general overview. How does your dream landscape currently look do you do you see color is there a lot of audible stuff what what does your dream life kind of look like right now so they're vivid you know a couple interesting things with my dreams is they're always bringing a message and it's usually not a good message for people so when i have a dream about the car accidents or if i i, I had this horrible like Oh God, they're so vivid that I can't even explain it to you. I've Saturn in my 12th house and it's just crazy. So the dreams that I, I just had recently had a dream of this. It was horror. It was like the worst dream in the world. This dog, I, can't, I don't even want to say it. Cause like if there's animal lovers here, but this guy kept texting me and blowing up my phone. One of my subscribers was driving me crazy. You know, he kept waking me up in the middle of the night and all this stuff. Well, I, he had a, I had a dream that this big dog got ran over and the dog was, somebody let the dog out of a car and it was sitting right behind me and this big truck came and slammed it. It was the worst. I was crying for like, I don't cry. I woke up crying. Okay. And it was very, very upsetting. And this kid, this kid, yeah, calls, called me again. And I answered the phone. I was like, you really, you can't be calling me. This is like not, I'm like a professional. I don't talk to people like this. I don't mm -hmm. know how you got my number, blah, 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 but it was getting out of control. And um, then he, I was talking to him. I did his chart because I'm nice. And then, <laughs> and then come <laughs> to find out he ra he hit a dog. Oh wow! And ran over all these dogs. It was horrible. <gasps> so like, oh. I will. My dreams are going to be like this: like fires, car accidents, and if I have a dream, you know, or they go, or they're sex. Like that's that's all they are, and they're very accurate. So they're always spot on <laughs> like they, okay so let's dive into that so uh, usually i wait i hold this portion till later but since you you've kind of introduced it so in um like it's almost precognitive or dreaming true has this always been something that has been part of your dream life that you actually dream true yes 
always. This is mm, fabulous. This is a rare treasure here. Yeah, I um, say, if I ever have a dream and call you and don't go into the car the next day, you better take my advice. <laughs> I always heed. I always heed the warnings. Yeah. This is, um, so that example was great. And um, okay, so in that example also, how lucid do you feel when you're getting this information? Does it feel like this experience we're having right now or is it different? No, it feels like this. Like it's, it's, uh, I've messed around with like lucid dreams too. And, you know, I do, I used to video myself doing past life hypnosis to myself, lucid dreams. And um, I mean, I can really go into the dream world when I want to, you know, I don't, I don't really know what you mean by, is it lucid? Cause I used to do lucid dreams connecting with, I would meet people, talk to people, it was pretty spot on. And it was like, I was living in this, it was like, I was here, like in this real time. Like your dream was a real, a reality. Oh yeah. That's, that's lucid dreaming in, yeah. in our definition. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And then also, you know, there's kind of, even though for me, I know there's a lot of people that have a lot of um, dogma around these titles. And so we don't, we, we really flow with all this stuff. Um, but there are there are a school of thought where there's a separation between lucidity in your dream and then being out of body, you know, and um, I, I don't know where that line is for me. So I don't really enforce. I don't have a dogma there. I just feel like if I'm really lucid in dreams, I'm not actually attached to my body in, in the way that it feels like I'm out of body. Let me put it that way. So is. Is there an, is there, is it the same? And how do you, because ex- your idea of lucidity sounds like OBEs to me, which is how I kind of experience them. Yeah, but I don't like, like, I don't feel myself in this same body. Or this, right. No. In your Heidi body. No, 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 no. I'm just like, I don't, it's so hard to put into some, some of this stuff into words because it's kind of confusing to explain, <laughs> explain, but like I, oh, and I feel like I can get into that state when I'm awake sometimes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> wow. And this is all just come to you naturally. I, you know, I often wonder, uh, it's a ponder of mine. So with people who've had a harder, a rough beginning in life, I've noticed that, that aren't totally shut down have um, these kind of extra abilities and um, are able to bilocate, step out of their the the I, the ego, the me. And um, you're reinforcing that for me for sure. Um, so when you get information and this last example you gave, how does it, when you wake up, do you have that? Does it fade away real fast, or do you have? To, oh Lord! <laughs> Hold on. Yes. No. I... <laughs> Only with me. I bring all the. I bring all the challenges to any show. Always. It's all good. It's not a challenge. It's just typical. It's par for the course. That's right. When people with big energy come on the show, it's very uh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had some interesting things happen lately. Oh my gosh, it's been the weird couple couple days. Yes, it has. It really has. Yeah. yeah, dreams have been kicking up a notch this week too. That's funny. That I'm talking about dreams. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder what's. Probably- I knew I had to do a show on dreams. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. Oh, God. Wow, I, I apologize for that. No, that's okay. <laughs> Shit happens. Feces <laughs> occurs. <laughs> this is the craziest show. <laughs> okay, so in your, dream, in your recall of information that you get, is it, is it crystal clear for you or does it fade? No, it's very clear. I can tell you like everything. If I see a man in a shred shirt, I'll see a man in a red shirt that day and I'll think about it all day. So it'll be very like the, that dog thing. Like I could still pic- picture that dream so vividly where it's still bothering me. <laughs> you know, like it still bothers me if I think about it. Like I just saw a, the night I, I like animals a lot, like more than people. So I get yeah, really emotional with the animal. Like, I don't know. So 
I just saw something that was on an airline. I can't even look at it. It's just like, ugh. some United Airlines did something with, I don't know why I'm even saying this, but they made the dog go in the bin. Oh my God. Like, I can't even look at this stuff. And this is the stuff that I remember. Yeah. Like, crazy stuff that you don't want to remember. Aren't they going to flush somebody's hamster down the toilet or something? Oh my God. I didn't hear that. There was, there was a bunch of uh, people have comfort pets now or something. I forget yeah. exactly what the term was, but uh, like a lady had was trying to bring her peacock on a plane, like this huge peacock. And I would let him on the plane if it was my plane. <laughs> they weren't going to let. Like, yeah, I'm they with you on that. Bring him on. They don't want to see it. See you later. Get off the plane. <laughs> it, it just seemed like there was a rash of odd pets who wanted to fly over the yeah. last couple of months. And it's like, what the... <laughs> oh, so, um, okay, so back back to these examples on do you is there a separation so i I'm, i want to try and parse this out so you get these precog dreams that are usually about other people do you have stuff that is personal that um like re besides the reoccurring one you gave us already but like um is there any reoccurring landscapes that aren't um, attached to the one the example you gave us earlier that you visit are things ever familiar in the dreamscape for you mm. it, there, it's always like a story I don't I mean I it could be about me it could be about me and you know people at work it could be about me and Jerry and you never know like it could be anything there they just there's no patterns usually like that Thanksgiving thing was weird yeah uh, there's never anything that's it's sometimes I won't dream. You know, sometimes I notice if I take melatonin, I don't I don't dream at all. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because people say that that, you know, that's an aid in it. But there's also a lot of research around that frying out those re neural receptors. I've heard both and I can tell you that usually with me everything works as a reverse. So if it does good things to people, it probably does the total opposite to me. <laughs> uh, my Girl in retrograde. Yeah. So I've noticed that like people will be like, oh, this does this, this for you. And it's made me completely 100% reversed. Do you experience deja vus? A lot. Yeah. What, what does a deja vu feel and look like for you? Like how, what's the experience like? Oh, they happen all the time. And I just like, I'm always so busy that it's hard for me to even you know, I wish I could write wrote them down because I, I, it happens a lot. It's just, and then it makes me feel like I'm crazy for a minute. Like, did that just happen? And it makes me stop. So it's almost like to me, a message meaning, Heidi, you need to slow down. Oh, interesting. Have you ever been able to locate where the deja vu originated? Like sometimes maybe like you had, maybe you've gone into a place and maybe you had actually been there or did you dream it? What, what, what associations have you been able to make? No, I haven't. I, I actually haven't put any energy into that. So I don't have an answer for that. Cool. That It's interesting. I, I like that you have the, a lot of them though. I love them when they happen. So I always think it's kind of like a little treat in the day. <laughs> yeah. I Give me my dog really treat. Well, you know what really scares me when I drive a lot? I, I do drive a lot because I have long drives. And I don't pay attention. I don't even know how I get there. And I can do a million things. And when I, that to me is, I go into these trances when I'm, when I'm driving that are very, very, it's scary because I don't even know how I got there without dying. And that's- You're like on autopilot. Yeah. Like it's liminal almost. Yeah, exactly. a, lot of, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Do you, is your match, do you have a, a heavy active imagination or daydreaming side? Yeah, big time. I've got a moon in Pisces. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Are, but uh, it seems to me, I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know a lot about you personally, but it seems to me like that people that are able to construct or actively imagine actually are manifestors. So um, there's a, the waking dream, there's a power in, in focusing it. Or have you ever, if you harness that energy, do the things you actively want come to you without much effort? Yeah, but it's not like, 
it's because I physically work, like I will work for them or I will make it happen, you know? So yes, I manifest things, but it's not, I don't do spells or dreams or, you know, I don't no, do You that. don't have to. Yeah. But if you're, if you, you're like actively <laughs> you're imagining yourself, yourself, you know, attaining whatever or getting, um, being in a place you want to be. And then, you, you know, of course you have to do the work. It's ridiculous for people to think they can't in the end, you know, um, but you, you're able to manifest these things. It um, seems. Yeah. I, I would say things that I like dream about doing. No, I mean, I feel like I'm never going to get there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I hope so one day. So I, I, it's, well, yeah, I, I, th I would say I could manifest things. Yeah. When you, um, have you ever experienced any kind of like download in dreams? Uh, this is about personal learning stuff. So say, I mean, it's not uncommon to be in school and then you dream about your schoolwork, right? Or whatever your, you know, the daily stuff. But have you been at attempting, like when you're learning astrology, were you getting any assistance like through your dream life? Were you getting downloads that way? No, but predictions, yes. More so like weather stuff and... I have crazy dreams of weather, like she, like hurricanes, earthquakes, all kinds of stuff. Isn't that just a form of premonition, though, or gu guidance? Look at it is you can look at it as guidance too, but yeah. they came to you as predictions. I guess I would, yeah. I mean, it might not even happen, you know. But my 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 dreams aren't like I don't I haven't really I guess to say. I haven't tried, worked on them that much to say that I've done, tried to, I've thought about doing those things mm -hmm. um, when I, before I started doing so much astrology. Um, but sometimes I feel like that takes my focus off of astrology. It puts me out in la la land and I have to get back to reality. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I try to balance that because if, if I go into too much like that stuff, I'll get lost in outer space doing that because I, I've, I've watched, I've done regressions on myself for hours and hours and videoed it. <laughs> okay. Just to see what <laughs> happened. And like, so whatever, but it's, it's, to me, it's more because I get so intense with things. I'm like extreme. Everything I do is extreme, extreme me, everything. It's like balls to the wall with Heidi. So I have to just right now, I can't really do any work with that. But if I try to fall, I, I, if I put a hypnosis on, they work, but I don't really like do work, see if I can download things or I just, I just try to help people's lives with astrology. Right, right. But, you, <laughs> but sometimes some people you don't have to try, they just get it and accept it as part of just the way they operate. And you've already, in, I would look at it that you integrate these things nicely without needing an external spirit guide if you will to tell you, right, you know what I mean? it's like you're yeah. complete integrated these things and you got them in dreams or intuition gut feeling whatever you know i could i you're psychic pretty much you just don't yeah. realize it or yeah i think i am but i blocked a lot of it out because my dreams yeah. were really scary at points like i i sleep with a fire extinguisher by my bed <laughs> oh wow <laughs> wow right i mean i'll show you it's it's right by my bed Never have I been in a fire, but I have this fear. So this is past life stuff I know. Yes. Maybe getting over the fear would strengthen your abilities or make them more on the, come up to the surface. You know? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I don't know how much more I want them to because they scare. Like sometimes they get so crazy where I just, I have to just like. Come on. You I'll know you want to be the extreme psychic. No, I really don't. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, not, kidding. Yeah, I'm not hearing that from her. <laughs> no, I don't. Like, I really don't because it gives me anxiety because then I'll start Googling everything, looking yeah. for all these patterns, and my mind goes into, like, detective mode. So if I get the download like this, then Heidi goes into detective. She starts <laughs> searching for all day long. Her whole day is shot because she's going to Google this earthquake, this, 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 this. It's like, it's that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any... Um... Have you had any like crazy kind of like world dreams recently about the the climate we're living in? And, and I, if this could be weather, this could be about stuff that's going on in the world since you dream true so often. 
Mm -hmm. I did before the hurricanes um, last, like last year, I was having some wild dreams about weather and storms and stuff. And um, recently I haven't about anything. And, um, but I did a lot, a lot, a lot of that is weather. Global would be more so weather. Yeah. You yeah, was gathering that. Well, let us know if you do. If you do, <laughs> I am. Yeah, uh, my yeah. ear is there, right there, Heidi. There's a subplot <laughs> running lately that we're investigating. So, oh, man. so have you ever experienced? Okay, there's this kind of two, two questions here. One, have you gotten feedback from others that you sleep talk or sleep walk? Yeah. No. I'm like a silent, I just, just like a mouse. <laughs> I'm just real quiet. I just lay there. Yeah. No, I've never heard that. And what about sleep paralysis? Have you ever had that paralysis experience? What is that like? What's it been like? So those times, like a lot of, like I said before, my, my dreams have been very scary. So, yeah. and they have been literally like me ch being chased around or me being, you know, being in this horrible situation that I just can't, and then I wake up like petrified, where I can't, like, I don't even, I can't even talk about it. It gives me anxiety to think about it. And it's just like, you can't even move. You're just mm -hmm. stuck there. And I think that's what, I don't know if that's what that is. But. That, yes, that's, that's definitely, that's the main symptom. There's, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that goes with it. Some people sense a presence in the room. Um, and then of course, you know, for me, I'll be screaming or trying to like alert, like trying to just get some sort of anything happening with my actual physical body. And so I'll usually jump in and then I'll be physically screaming, <laughs> like yeah. trying to, you know, trying to make noise, but I wasn't able to move. So that, that's definitely a stage. Yeah. When I feel like somebody's just, I, I just can't move because I'm scared. Somebody, I don't know what, it, who I'm scared of because it'll be nothing that I should be scared of of uh, like for instance that dog thing that dream yes i still was laying there like a mess like oh my god i can't believe this i don't want to fall back asleep though you know it was one of those because if i fall back asleep i will continue these stories like they will keep on moving that was my next question so that yeah that is interesting because it really does i mean you really are just picking up on like timeline events it's pretty pretty fantastic i know you're not loving it but i'm loving hearing it yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I hate the truth. Yeah, <laughs> they've my they've been. I've had some really, and I'm going to tell you when I da dabbled with Ouija boards back in the day when I was in college and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk about some scary things. We did some Bloody Marys and stuff. Like I've we when we were young. I mean, I've had a, a paranormal side, which is why I think I cut it all out after that because I knew I was so intense with this, yes. and yes. I knew I could do all. Like I know I can tap into whatever crazy things that I want to tap into. But yes. it's like like I can look into the mirror and see crazy things. Like scary things, like crazy things. Like and I just but I block it out because I'm like this my Venus debilitated in Virgo, all this practical stuff doesn't even want to address it. It's like no. Get back to your analysts. Go back to <laughs> go back to your charts. But before that it used to just scare me too bad. Yeah. And, and so like that stuff you were doing, um, that was in the waking world, like with the Ouija board or doing the mirror spraying stuff, would that stuff then play out or play a uh, spill over into your dreams? Yeah. Exactly. Cause I can imagine that being really not pleasant. I was petrified of like things under my bed, mm -hmm. you know, like people, <laughs> I don't know who, but I don't want to say monsters. Cause I was what, 20 years old, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'll, I'm still kind of. I used to be so scared of the dark and mirrors. Mirrors were a big thing for me. So I just- Why do you think mirrors? Because I did a lot of mirror stuff, Bloody Marys, mm -hmm. a lot of Bloody Marys, a lot of mirrors. Like, and I just would look at myself in the mirror and see weird stuff, you know? Yeah, well, they are kind of, they're, they're, I mean, it's justified and ancient. So there's a reason, there's a good reason to be respectful mirrors of are it. portals. Yeah, total portals. And uh, what you were doing, looking in the mirror, with the low light, there's actually, I forget what it's called, a device that allows you to scry. It's basically scrying. It's called scrying. Hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you something, too. I will say also that I have this weird thing with the mirrors where I can see things and I can see visions or whatever you want to call it. But then after I do, like a few years later, when I 
like I'll break mirrors, like five mirrors broken one year in my house. It was the worst year of my life too. Oh, wow. Oh, and that was followed up with bad luck? Yeah, big time. Oof. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. That's not even a, that's not, that's totally, I believe that statement. Of course you do, because it happened to you. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Five mirrors broke. Like that's kind of crazy. That's a, yeah, that's extreme. What if it was that you broke them with your mind? However, that happened, right? And then your belief in the bad luck coming because of it generated that bad luck because you're such a powerful mentalist or whatever. Could have, or it could have been that it was just, it was already bad and mirrors just (laughs) breaking. Five? (laughs) Okay. 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 Like it was crazy. Oh my God. Could have been. Do you, um, what about entities and stuff? Do you, have you encountered them in, in any state, but also dreams too, where they're like, you know, they're non-human or there's so, there's something. So I unfortunately have never seen aliens. Okay. I've not, never seen anything like that. I have seen, I'm not or even ghosts, you know, whatever, ghosts, all okay. of it. I would say ghosts. I, maybe I've seen some ghosts, but like they've been ones I've made. I feel like I've made them. Cause you killed them. So- no. Okay. No, but your unconscious created them. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. We've got a secret side to Heidi here. Yeah, yeah. She's no, such she's extreme, you know. <laughs> Trail of dead. I feel like I've made them come into my life. Like I've brought them in. Place. And I took them. <laughs> like I've created them, visioned them. And so then I think, are they even real? You know, because mm-hmm. I've brought them out too. Now they're mm-hmm. they come into my life. I'm not scared of them. I can look in the mirror when I think of them. Okay. Well, what do you think? Okay. So what do you think? the what do you think's happening in dreams why do we dream what is what's going on with all that aside from the daily chatter that we get out you know i don't know that's and that's a great question because obviously we really don't really have that that answer but i do think it's another realm that you know i i used to think about this you know when you start thinking about what happens when you die Yes, which I'm going to get to. <laughs> okay. That thought, like I will have that thought a lot. And I used to have it a lot when I was, you know, before I did astrology. But you go down that trail and you're like, oh my God, what happens? And you start thinking like whatever. And it, to me, I I don't know. I, I feel like dreams are messages and dreams are another world. Dreams. Sometimes I feel like maybe we're dreaming over here. You know, it's maybe that's the reality. Who the hell knows? We don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, it well it's it's I find it kind of entertaining to ponder these things. I think yeah. it's because and this is the thing, it's that we're at equal playing ground. We all have there's no proof anywhere. Yeah. So um okay, so on that, with that line of thought, what about death? What are your thoughts on what is that? What happens when we die? What is death? Yeah. So I used to think death was like, you were going to hell to the bottom of the pit, burning in fire your entire life. If you sin, you know, this is my fear-based thought. Now that I'm not scared to die anymore and that I've made amends because, and I'm going to tell you, this is where religion has like a, a weird spot with me because that's all it does is fear. Makes you scared to die, period. Makes you scared mm-hmm. to go to hell. Makes you scared. To, I used to be scared of thinking impure thoughts okay <laughs> oh was, wow <laughs> like i went to christian school that used to speak in tongues and i couldn't speak in tongues and i would get so mad i used to write heidi loves jesus on the walls okay with glow in the dark <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> I mean, I crazy, okay? <laughs> this is a scorpio rising with cars and k2 in the first house so this is you, you were know, all in <laughs> yeah i mean i was because i just thought this is the answer you know but then I would be like, okay, well, why did I even think that? I shouldn't be thinking that if I'm so saved. So then I'd go saved, get saved again, ask Jesus as my Lord and Savior again every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Something's not, <laughs> something's off. Why do I have to do this? It just, oh God, it just drives me nuts. But yeah, you know, it's, with- that's, that's how people get out of it. They're like, wait, these are contradict things and this doesn't make any sense. Wait a minute. But people who don't critically think basically get stuck in it exactly and then bring the whole G- it's jesus jesus is coming in revelation jesus has been coming since since i've been thinking he was coming <laughs> i couldn't even tell you like every revelation jesus has been coming since he left right but yeah. think of all the mental <laughs> think of all the powerful energy that's gone in towards worshiping this this dude jesus how many of them 
Did you see that show American Gods that was on <laughs> Stars last year? In in the one of the last later episodes. She doesn't watch. Yeah. Oh, you don't watch TV. Well, I didn't hear that because I had to reboot. Anyway. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but one in the last episode, it was Easter or the uh, whatever the Astarte, East, yeah. Astarte uh, and the goddess Ashtar, Ishtar. I forget which goddess was there. All the the storyline is that all the gods have in, have reincarnated or come back, really is a better word, uh, to America from Europe because they're dying out because nobody believes in them anymore. Neil and, Gaiman wrote, wrote yeah, this. Yeah, and the new gods way. in America are media and I forget the rest of them now. Uh, media. Internet, um, all that stuff. Internet, yeah. technology, right. Was internet, uh, technology, yeah. Mr. World is like the world, you know, Mr. Globalist God. And the old gods are like Odin, you know, and the old Norse gods come back and there's going to be a battle if the second season gets made. But my point was in the last episode, it was Easter or whatever the true Easter was with the true goddess who Easter was. Astarte. Astarte. And there were about 15 or 20 Jesuses roaming around. One was Mexican, one was white, one was Arabic, one was black. You know, it was like every group, every Christian group's belief of what their Jesus looked like manifested here at this party it was interesting yeah that makes i mean definitely i see would see that and you know there's part of me that isn't sold that we're living in the matrix like there I, when i was on when i every time i go on a plane and i'm up there in the clouds i have like these weird visions like i'm really happy on planes for some strange reason if i were to do it all over maybe i would be a pilot but when i'm up there i just have like this this thing like I don't know how to even say this. I wish I could express what I want to say, but um, like I have this vision that I'm sitting there looking at myself down there. Like, this is a joke. Wake up, Heidi, you idiot. You know, mm -hmm. like, that, like that you, are you this stupid? You're going to sit down here in this, like, that's what I would want to say to myself if like, and I laugh, like, and I'm like, <laughs> and I like, think about this. And this is like, I go into this zone that I can see and, and not just on a plane. I've had this, in other thoughts, you know, throughout my life, recent, I'd say recently, and I would, yeah, not when I was in fear-based mode, um, <laughs> but, and it's so true, like, I feel like we are, leveling like, up. the dream, maybe, like, this is the simulation, we're the matrix, but then you start wondering, like, I don't know, but I just, when you start looking into technology and stuff, and you see, I, I am convinced that we have been to this place, at this advanced level at one time before. And it's all stories and it's all stuff that the, you know, the whole system, it, this is what I believe. Like, it's just- A giant rerun. Yeah. yeah. That heard, we, we've been talking about this. Yeah, I heard someone recently in the last six months or so say that, uh, that, that we are, this is Atlantis. You know, the theory is time's a loop. So the past is the future and we are in Atlantis now. We are the culture that destroys itself. Yeah. And well, I see that. Like I, or, like I see that one hundred percent. Like I'm just waiting for the day. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, it's. But I'm not scared to die anymore. That's the beauty of it. Like if I get hit by a bus or the world comes to an end, like I always say, everybody's talking about all these damn bunkers. I'm gonna. I'm not going to a bunker with a bunch of conspiracy theorists. <laughs> my love them all. Why? <laughs> because I don't want to be. Like I just don't want to be in the in a bunker. We're going to a better place. The fear, like we, we, the doctors do all these surgeries to prolong people's lives. Look at my brother. They prolonged his life, gave him open heart surgery when he should have passed away many years ago. Mm -hmm. We made him suffer here longer. That's what we do. Yeah. It's, a, it's so much, there's so much fear and it's lots of fear is based on completely unknowable things, yeah, which is of course what all the religions are based around. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just unknowable. And then everyone's got an answer. Everyone's got a date. On top yeah. of that, they're death cults. They worship death. Yeah. Right. Well, that's where the fear comes in. So you, you definitely went naturally into, like, one of our questions is, what do you think, what is waking life? I mean, you totally just kind of, yeah, when you brought us into that matrix, um, and the that where do you think, too. yeah, yeah. Um, where do you think conscious, what do you think consciousness is in its purest sense? 
So that's outside of you as Heidi. I love asking people that question because I don't Uh know. We're turning it on you. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't like, I don't know. I can't sit here and say, I know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. And I, what do you think it is? What could it be? What could it be? Yeah. What are your thoughts now, especially having clients and dealing with this, these kinds of things? What do you have any, um, suspicions or, you know, notions? Yeah. Mm. About what it could be. Do you want some leading questions? Do you think there's like a, a collective, a, a collective consciousness that we're all no. a part of? No. I don't. I don't. I'm not one of those. So I think everybody. I think people get themselves wrapped up in these freaking things, these collective consciousness, <laughs> and then that's why they all go crazy. Because be, I guess maybe because I've I've dropped myself away from everybody. I'm a like I like to be alone. I like to think alone. I don't let anybody else's thoughts in, influence me that I look at it like they're just, they're getting swarmed down another. Oh, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it like a hive mind. I meant more like that uh, we exist like cloud. on the physical plane and above us and whatever, you know, in the etheric plane is the collective consciousness, the collective unconscious, some people call it. I guess it. it's hard it's like, for me to understand that. It would I be don't... like all, all the, it's, I, have, you heard I people talk, I mean, have you ever heard people talk I mean, about source? Yes. It's yes. source. It would be that concept where uh, there's one thing that we're all connected to at some level. Yeah. I'd say nature. Yes, girl. <laughs> yes. I wish all no man could hear that. That's, um, <laughs> that rings with me always. Nature, like in animals and mm-hmm. you know, grass, a cactus that I just have. Like I killed mm-hmm. that. I'm the worst gardener, so my and I don't do that. I get, just let my friends do it, and I eat it, um, and give them money. For my <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, but I know I have to every once in a while get a little grounded. I need to get a little Virgo in my chart, so I have this cactus now, and I can't kill it because they can't die. Like you can't <laughs> kill a cactus. I have this big ass cactus in my room. <laughs> oh, it's so, yeah. So I plants. I I actually can connect. We're I what I'm saying. This is so weird, but. Like I get sad now, you know, if I, once you're conscious, if that, you know, like to do the right, okay, here's what I think consciousness is <laughs> like thinking positive thoughts, doing the right thing. Like for instance, being aware that that grass is living, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Being aware that that cactus, you can't just let it sit there. You have to water it once every few months. Okay. Yes. <laughs> being aware that, or it's going to die. Like now I won't waste food anymore after I know how sad things are in India and how being aware of the simplest shit in life, in my opinion, (laughs) is like, that's really important. Yeah, I'm so with that. It's, um, It's such a higher level of functioning, actually, though, to acknowledge the life force in everything, especially stuff that is considered, um, non like nothing you know plants especially lots of animals it's mm-hmm. it's interesting um and, you know and acknowledging just not even from that it, i guess you could say like the same type of feelings that i have in my readings because you know i talk to so many people with readings and charts and like they go through nobody goes to astrology when their lives are easy breezy and great you know you go to astrology right. when there's something wrong when you're, when things are hitting the fan so and not judging and looking at so everybody, like even people that cause pe- issues in your life, looking at them and saying, well, what, what's going on in their life that made them do this? What's triggering them? And that to me is another a whole another level of being ahead of everybody because you can understand what makes them tick, what, why they are reacting and acting a certain way. You can be on top of the world. Yes. Do you think with, um, okay, so, this just sparked a question about past lives. What are your thoughts on past lives? I love past lives. <laughs> well, because in Vedic, it's very much part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It makes sense to me. I don't really, like, I love that idea. I think, you know, I was probably, I came from a bad place, lots of them. I know I've done a lot of bad things. <laughs> I'm sure I've done some really good things too. I can say that I... It makes sense why we're reenacting, why we, we meet certain people with these karmic influences in our lives, why we meet people and have certain relationships that pay, play out. And I can tell you that they're in people's charts. It's in charts. And when I can see data and I look at data and can see karmic things, mm-hmm. um, 
that's why I believe it. I'm all about the data. Like I want to see the, 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 the juice. So, and that's what astrology has done for me, mm -hmm. been able to show me that. So I believe in past lives. I believe in reincarnation. I believe that's why people that are more evolved have more connections with animals, in my opinion. Yes. Oh, I, I totally agree. I, and with the other, you know, trees and grass and, mm -hmm. and all that, that I think that's a higher level of consciousness. What do you think is, why are we here now though, Heidi? What is this nowness about? That's a freaking one great question to ask myself. <laughs> I don't know. That's a great question. Um, well, I, well, my like cheesy answer is to, well, I guess you could say to, I kind of, I am on board a little bit with, you know, we got to do certain, I feel like we're, this here, in my opinion, is prison. Yes. That's what I believe. I believe we're here for a reason. We decided either to come here or, you know, we did bad things that made us come down here. I don't know. I believe this is a prison. I believe that we live in a prison with the whole Saturn rings, like what David, I think yes. like it makes so much sense. And like we Kronos, I mean, everything is time, everything's Saturn everything's it's, it's like this crazy matrix. This is why I believe in the matrix a little bit. Yeah. Can't, can't time itself be the prison? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, that, that would yeah, tie, that would tie in Saturn. Time. But we created time, you know, like we invented time. Who knows what time was before? Oh, yeah, there time. They live in hell. Yes. You know? Oh, definitely. So give us an idea of, so this is you as an astrologer with all of this wonderful gooey backgroundy stuff we've got going now. Um, what is your take on that though? Why, why is that family born into that part of India where they have to siphon through trash to find food to eat or born in war torn Syria? What is going on with this on like a bigger scale of reincarnation? or life cycling? Well, I've noticed that there are certain things, like I read people's charts in India a different way than I would read somebody's charts in the USA, and I'll give you a great example. A kid that has a chart in India, they're gonna, like the, a serial killer's chart here is probably a surgeon's chart in India, or mm. uh, somebody that, because their morals are different. Mm -hmm. they, yes, they right. Different morals with their families, and they, like, you know what? I watched this this documentary called Mother India. These kids were cutting off their arms to get to get money on the bus. And they would go beg. And they were oh, my God. And they were happier than any kid I've ever seen in the United States. When I Skype with my friends in India, the homeless kids on the streets, they are the most pleasant, happy, smiley. So who's to say that they're not happier, you know? Right. Right. I okay. love India and Indians, by the way. I've always had the infinity for yeah. for everything going on there, including the hardships because of the perspective of it. Yeah. And even uh, Africa. Uh, God, sorry. I was going to say, at least they're armless. They're harmless? No, armless. Uh, armless. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Jerry with the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So, but in that perspective, in this larger perspective though, so yeah. I guess let's look at the American, the American dream. <laughs> Is it a dream though? Because you can, I see some of the, my friends that are loaded money, miserable shit, suicide, kill themselves. So, yes. you know, it's yes. the same thing. So, well, this is what I'm trying to get at with what's your larger, what, so looking at it through astrology and Vedic astrology in particular, which actually deals with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. on a larger level, what, what do you think is uh, the cycles? Because, um, right. Well, we know, we know, especially those of us who have suffered, um, know that money's not going to save you. It's it, love, you know, the love of someone, you, the hot and passion is not going to, there's no savior. Yeah. And it, it, it's not a dollar. It's not a person. It's not an outfit. It's not a house. We save ourselves. So, but what is this, this whole idea of struggle on a larger level? And, and I understand the differences between like, say India or, the, you know, Syria, as opposed to 
America. And I wanted to bring it home to America because we are in a bubble here. And I think most people that can step outside of it can see it clearly, um, especially if you've been out of the country or have friends out of the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jerry's hilarious, by the way. You can't, people in the chat can't, can't see <laughs> what's going on. Our sideshow here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh God. But you know, you're making a great point. So what I, so how I say it is you can use astrology to make um, the best of this crazy life we live on. That's how I look at it. Like there's no answers. We're never going to get the answers. You get the answers that can help you make this life a little bit easier and, Mm -hmm. you know, to make the best of some really good opportunities, not fear things, use your talents, use your awesome opportunities that you can, that make you happy. And you can see them in charts. And I try to keep my readings like on more of like a, you know, just showing people all their purposes, all their stuff, all their gifts that they could be doing. Because if somebody, you know, the typical, the reality of the story is if you know what you're supposed to be doing in life, you're probably not going to be miserable. You're probably not going to be control. You're you're happy and you know your life purpose. Mm -hmm. But how many people don't live their life purpose that go to their nine to five job, in there, they'd have to be a doctor when they probably want to be like in India, they have to be doctors or engineers when right. some of them probably want to be artists. Some of them probably want to. And then here, you know, we have these just what I, I don't even know what it's like. It's here. It's just, in my, it's just confusing, but we have all the opportunities in the world, but we complain. We, yeah. we take advantage of, of opportunities. We, we blame everybody for everything. We're lazy. We are a lot of yeah. us. Are. Yes, definitely. And we take advantage of everything. We think everybody owes us something. Like this is, yeah. we complain. And this that everyone's out to get us. Yeah, every, yeah, everybody's bad. Everybody's, you know, and it's just like, so you can either live with your head in the sand, in my opinion, and your miserable trapped life making it worse, or mm-hmm. you can have a little fun and use like music. If you have music talents, you know, do those, dance, whatever, use the creative things. Stop watching TV and watching all the corruption that, it makes your head fill up with junk. That's probably mm. that's step one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. One. That's a big major step. Yeah. For a lot of people. Yeah, so you and, when you're watching, having sorry. when you're, you're having a bad dream, how do you get out of it? Well, that was a totally diverted question. Um well no, because it's all tying in. Yeah, no. So I just I didn't mean, just wake up. <laughs> so like, you don't act so when you're having when you're being chased down yeah. or when stuff's really bad and you're seeing bad stuff and viewing bad stuff you're able to just wake up or is there something that will trigger it yeah sometimes i just know you got to get out you got like i know it's dreams like in this weird way i know it's a dream and i can get out of it and then what i make myself do now instead of going to the perilous stage i make myself get up and walk so i stop thinking about it laying in bed because i'll be sweating I make myself get out. That's good. That's the only reason I, I I moved to that question was because I view this all kind of as a dream anyway. So when we're talking about like the struggles around us for and the examples we've been using, I try to sometimes apply dream logic. Like how do I get out of this? Or how do I find meaning in all this really muckety muck terrible stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. I'm not sure that it's, there's an answer there, but yeah. there's some, we're, we're having a relationship with us dreaming yeah. at some point I you agree. go to sleep and you, you're, you're, you're being yourself as your essence of who you are aside from your, your physical life here. And so, and yet it's tying in in Vedic astrology where, what's the house of dreams? I was good. You're like reading my mind. That happens. You're done. Yeah, because I, yeah, I want you to email me because I'm so curious to know your chart though because you think a lot like me. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'll, I'll send that to you in chat. Okay, it's all 12th house. All 12th house. So when you see, okay, so let's talk 12th house here for a minute. And it, because it, since this show is really about dreams and, and all that, um, do you, have you see have you noticed this is kind of a weird question and it's been on my mind a lot lately do looking at people on heavy ssris and mental issues and um and high depression and then into psychosis like schizophrenia mm-hmm. is there any tie in to yeah. the 12th house mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And so do you see, you, can you see this in some of your work you've done that? Pre- yeah. There's a lot of tie-ins with this. So first of all, anytime somebody has the moon eclipsed with the North node, South node, which is Rahu K2 in, in Vedic astrology, um, they're definitely triggered to more dreams, more schizophrenic mental, mental disorders. Usually a moon K2, um, will be more along the lines of depression. Mm-hmm. And then you have the, and I have K2 in my first house. So I'm very familiar with K2 <laughs> He's on my shoulders every day. Okay. So it's, but it makes me understand the people way better. Cause I am so, cause this is, you know, I'd learn all about this myself through myself and learn about me. So in the patterns here and you know, K2 will make pe- but K2 is the past. It's his moksha. He doesn't care. He just wants to get out of this crazy life. So there tends to be a lot of like, you know, just trying to get out of, just, just get out of here. So people that are, su- can be suicidal and stuff like this. Yeah. 12th house, 8th house is death endings, but dream state would be more 12th house because that's the sleep. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's the 12th. But also the monks come out of there. It's the natural Pisces oh. sign. Pisces, you know, Pisces is in 12th house because it's the 12th sign. Yeah. So that Pisces, it's. Self-sacrifice, hospitals, jails, prisons, mysteries, asylums, it's ashrams, yoga, meditation. Um, it's letting go, loss, endings. It's literally just the end. So it's the end. It's you know, it's the most lib. It's liberation, <laughs> and it's Pisces. So it's like, yeah. But when Rahu's there, you'll deal with the people that have to die a lot. But Rahu Moon can make somebody schizophrenic, bipolar, crazy. Yeah. And I've noticed that there's a lot of people that take the, the medicines and stuff too, that shouldn't be like, last thing a K2 moon person needs to do is take depression, depression medicine. Last mm-hmm. thing. It, it seems like uh, uh, this has been a topic I've been finding myself, a conversation I've been finding myself in with a lot of people who are um, on meds because they're depressed or other reasons and um, defend them highly. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm not judging. I, you know, whatever works for you, it's your life, right? Um, I'm just wondering if there's another way. And, and so I, I found myself wondering this through, through the, 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 the map of astrology. And so like you just said, with someone who has K2 in the 12th house, probably SSRIs are not the best thing for them. A K2 moon conjunction. So if the moon is sitting with K2, because you're already emotionally detached and cold, but you'll think you're depressed, you're foggy and cloudy. So if you take an antidepressant, you probably need Adderall is probably what you need. <laughs> to get you out of that, right. Out of that, yeah. But you'll, yeah. you know, people are doing all these diagnoses. And, and like a, a moon Rahu could make a kid that has crazy high ADHD. Somebody with Rahu in the first house is make, going to make a nightmare of a child. One of those like kids that you want to, you're like, does this kid need some, you know, because it's, this expression needs to get out and it's Rahu. Just So you can see all this stuff in kids' charts, everybody's charts. That's why everybody needs astrology readings. It is so necess- It's so necessary, like when, to get readings on your kids so you know why they're acting. Maybe it's a phase. Yeah, right. Something like a transit or something. Yeah, it, it, it could be. And you could make that transit a lot worse if you're telling your kid to do something. You Go ahead it. and take those sex change drugs. It's okay. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Well, this is what I wish that this would actually be part of allopath, you know, like it would make allopathic medicine better because I, I, I'm more of a naturopath. And so I think the thinking in terms of these other ways, um, especially Vedic is so old. Heidi, how old is it? It's t- Oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's the oldest, they say, like, I believe, so I, in my opinion, it's the oldest ancient scripts. Everything was stolen from British, from British, from the British in India, stole all the texts, all the Vedic texts, the, um, the actual Veda, Rig Veda. So in my opinion, it is the oldest, the most factual Indians made the number zero. They made, it's basically right. Them. So we're all run by numbers. Everything's numerical. And, you know, when you go into those, it's like, I don't like to do all the research and analysts. Why? It's like just why the answers are working. Yeah, <laughs> right. Working. I'm not, because you can go down that hole. Nobody will ever know. And I don't trust anybody, quite honestly, that tells us any stories. So, Well, my point is, though, that there's been a lot of time to iron out yeah. inconsistencies. This is like a, it's really a, a hard science. And it was originally the science. Mm-hmm. 
So, well, and, it, and it uses the sidereal zodiac. So if you take a star chart app and take it and stick it in the sky right now, you can see it's Saturn. Like a star, you know, you download a star chart, like on your, you can see where the planets are and you can go like this. Mm -hmm. Right. You can see that Saturn is in Sagittarius. It's not in Capricorn. Okay. So sidereally is using the sidereal zodiac. That's Vedic astrology. And I don't care about all the, like, if they say the Western have their way about the rotation, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? In my opinion, when I was born, it was probably still sidereal zodiac. So I'm going to follow that. That's how I look at it. Because I can mm -hmm. see. It. So Saturn, you can see Saturn is in Mars, just um, went into Sagittarius just like today. You know, it's it's not, you can see it's the real time zodiac. That's all Could I you prove. Is there, is there, is there possibility of, um, through astrology being able to guide, say you want to do dream work. Is there, um, are there any cues or tips for doing dream work through the astrological lens? Um, I mean, I give people, tell people all the time, like if they have a good 12th house, I say you could like, especially certain nakshatras, like aslacia, hypnosis is people that can dig deep, do past life hypnosis is the Jupiter and Mula. So yeah, there's a lot of triggers. Like I would say, maybe hypnosis is, but you know, some I, maybe some people don't have to be cautious with that dream state because they can go down. Yeah. Some people can go into into la la land and then can't get back to reality. Yes, and that's where you got to watch. When the people that have those moons, unstable moons, they can't balance this. That's where there's problems. Okay, yeah, it's good to know. I'm fascinated by the Vedic stuff. I want more. I want to know more. Um, who do you see is the most challenged as far as the dream life and other other stuff that's non-tangible? People that are the most challenged are people that can't open up their minds and they're stuck so in their own ideas and opinions and don't listen to anything else anybody has to say. But is there an astrological signature for that general type? Yeah, there's a lot of them. So it's... Oh. Well, yeah, there's a ton. Of, like it's, there's a million of them. Different, different conjunctions, different signs and conjunctions. It really is a big, like you have your astrology chart is like a big map. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like, let me just share. I'll share my. Can I share the screen real quick? Yeah. Here. We'll do mine. So, like this, just so you can see this is like a lot more than just your signs, you know? So this is your birth chart. This is the chart, you know, that you, you turn into for marriages and nakshatras, degrees, strength of planets, um, dasha systems. This is like, then you have to go, there's charts within charts with the Vedic system. So there's, you know, D60, end all, tell all, the money, the wealth chart, the D4 chart. This is the chart for happiness and money outside of the means. I mean, this is, it's like, then you can see, you got to see the transits. You have to see the real times. You can see all the things going around. It's just, it's definitely intense. Like it's a lot of, so your chart is mapped. It's like a map. It's like your roadmap of your life. Like this is what yeah. I was born into. Like this. Map, yes. You know? Yeah. So she can make some decisions and make the best, but there are certain things in this chart that aren't changing. Like her brother being handicapped. And that's the Mars K K2 in the first it's also the third lord of siblings going into the twelfth house of being prison and handicapped. Oh wow! Saturn is disabled. It's also, um, I mean, it's it's like crazy. You can just go with it all day. I love how in depth it is. It just is. It just seems like there's so much more here. Yeah, and the twelfth house is Saturn's sleeping dreams. You know, that's this house, and I've got Saturn and Pluto there. Oh my girl, you've got Pluto there. Yeah, that's why my that's why I have the dreams of the underworld. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, here we go. Oh wow. The greatest in the first house. <laughs> oh god, it's fun. Yeah. So that I mean, I guess I feel like um I feel like we covered all the dream territory I want to cover and then some. Um I don't really I don't really have any more questions in that. Well, I guess we should ask the the chat. I can't unmute. See. I had to unmute. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat for Heidi. Heidi, I did have a topic to bring up here. Mm -hmm. Someone in chat said this, and it was like I was like, yeah, that's true. Um, I lost it. 
Basically, though, that, that astrology directly relates to uh, hey stuff. Everything relates to that. It relates to psychology, and I responded, well, you know, all astrology relates to psychology, and it made me think in that moment. <laughs> this is going to be long and, and twisted, but basically, you know, you know all these aspects, like you did my chart before the show, right? And you told me all those things which were accurate, which means that I that those aspects of me came because of the star placement, planet placement at the time of my birth, right? So I was programmed, in other words, to live that life. So are all these aspects of personality stored in the heaven and you're imbued with them when you're born? What does that mean? What, what are you living? You know, what is your life at that point? Is it, is well, it you have free will? Is, is it just... Well, the way I the way I would look at it is that you're, it's basically your blueprint, and then you're free to express yourself in the limitations of that blueprint till you break free of it. And I'm going to be the my own devil's advocate because I say like, this could just be the matrix code that everybody uses. Okay, this is how you can tap into it or not, mm -hmm. and you can either utilize it and take advantage of it and know it or not. But I still there's something about me that thinks like possibly, just possibly mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you just said program, like what we shoot out of the sky. Like, do we even know how re really the atmosphere is? Like, we what? don't know all, you know? Don't so, even get me started on that. <laughs> so on and you know what? Yeah, we are programmed. <laughs> either get ahead of the system and use it to, for the matrix. All right. And learn the codes like everybody else. Right. But astrology is part of the matrix. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah. it's it's breaking free of your blueprint but staying within the boundaries, not breaking but free, but expanding upon it. But being in control. So nobody yes. can pull it over on you. So I'm yes. all about control. I love, I love the control. The yeah. control free. And, and, yeah. And I'm, I'm with you about the atmosphere and space and all that nonsense. Yeah. That the car, know. the car in space. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Like, come on. It's like, we don't know. We don't know, like, it, it, oh, God, just I know, we don't know. If I physically get flown into outer space on a spaceship, then I'll then I'll be able to answer logically. <laughs> I am so then, with you on that. I can't, I can't make a statement. <laughs> I'm not going to believe everything, that everything, I'm not going to say I believe the earth is flat. Don't go on that tangent either. But I'm just going to say, I don't know what it is. We could be living in a freaking, I don't know. Tank, like, an aquarium. A yeah, bubble, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a movie called Radio Free Albumuth. It might be on Netflix. It's uh, it's a, a B movie made from a, a Philip K. Dick story. It talks about uh, Philip. You know who Philip K. Dick is right. He's an author. He's science fi science fiction author. Died in the seventies, but he wrote probably a lot of science fiction books that became movies that you like, like Blade Runner or uh, God, a Total Recall was another one of his stories and. There's a bunch. I can't think of them right now. But anyway, Radio Free Album is a movie based on a Philip K. Dick story of the same name. And it's kind of a, a precursor slash continuation of his book, Valis, which was about him being in contact with a, an AI from space that sa actually saved his son's life, according to the story. But uh, it's, yeah, that, that book is really interesting. Or the movie, rather. And then, but now people have got me so down the train about everything with Hollywood. So then, every movie, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, it's part, you know, it's like. Well, Radio I, Free Album is about Hollywood, actually, <laughs> and and like yeah. how how it's kind of controlled <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, it's like it never it never ends. It never stops. It's like it never. So now I can't even. Oh, it's just so bad. You just I gotta look at it all as a movie, and you're you're what you're watching a play, uh, a show yeah. play out. You know. And so are we. We're watching our, like, that's how I think. So that makes me think we're living in a movie. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. We don't know what, yeah. it's like we're, we think we're in a cage, but the gates are open. You know, it's like, Maybe. We're, yeah. just, we're just here. We don't, well, we don't know. Right. There's right. actually, speaking of Flat Earth, by the way, on the 24th, I believe, a group of scientists <laughs> from Brazil, this no shit. They have done like laser experiments at all these different points around the planet, and they have made a model of the Earth, and it's flat. 
And it's I like, love how the sirens in the background went off when you said that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in, in their model, it's flat. It's it's basically like an. Um, I'll send you the link to it, but it's. Do you want me to uh, ask the rods? Do you uh, want any rod questions? I. <laughs> I'll have to turn on video for. I'll have to turn on video for rods. Um, so, do you have? Is there like any um, predictions you can give us about the collective through astrology that you've looked into right now recently? So I don't really do predictions so much. I'm more about helping individuals and their own stuff. But I can say this, we're going in a dicey transit, okay? there We are in a transit that anything goes coming up. I mean, there's a lot of chaotic energy. So there's in the in the sky right now, well, whatever sky <laughs> in the program, all right? <laughs> <laughs> whatever they're shooting. You notice how they hear But I'm so crazy. Like, I listen to police scanners with transit so I can watch what is going on. I've coded this stuff to a T. I can tell you when people are gonna overdose. I can tell you- Oh my God, I love this. But don't you find it awfully in coincidence that why they have jokes like full moon hospitals are on over right. patrol? Like this is all, they're like secretly talking to each other in a code that's like, so I, that's why I like to know it. So, you know, however, whatever we decide to come out to this crazy world, um, you can take these transits and you can watch out for things. You can be aware of things. Like right now with a Mercury retrograde in Pisces with Venus, lots of accidents, lots of overdoses, lots of driving, drinking, be careful. Don't, you know, like somebody just died here right across the street, accident, overdose, killed like three people. Lots of that. Do you notice how many planes are dropping, like planes or helicopters flying out of the sky, like lots of automobiles because it's Mercury. That, that happens a lot. Mercury goes retrograde a lot. But with Venus, Venus is cars, luxuries. So like planes would be, you know, technically anything you can, it's, would be Venus-y. You know, that's that's all that stuff. You have to code it all together. Then you have to look at, then, then the whole slammer here is Mars just rolled into Sagittarius, conjunct Saturn, and they're together in a fire sign in Sagittarius. So we've got Mars and Saturn conjunct in Sagittarius. That is like, oh, wait. Yeah, fire city. Okay. So <laughs> oh, shit. That's like, yeah. Uh, and then Mars and Mars, Saturn, oil, water. It's fine in Scorpio, but more so when it goes to Sagittarius, that's like wars, religion, you know, all that fun stuff, bombs, like <laughs> craziness, like everything you can think of chaotic. Um, How and, long are we looking at for these transits? Oh, well, this will be this whole summer because Mars actually stops stations and goes retrograde after June. The Mars is in Sagittarius sidereally and you can look at your star chart ups to make sure they're all, it's really really there. It's going to be there for basically this whole entire year. It, it hasn't gone retrograde since 2016 so it's going to be in Sagittarius just back and forth tearing it up like oh shit. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting summer. That's why this whole year is a lot in numerology. It's like a number 11. So it's all about change and like, it's true. Get on board, change, or yeah. learn, learn to go with the flow, open your minds. I always say, be open to things, not so freaking stuck in your ways. Because mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of changes and a lot of shakeups that we hear. A lot of people that where their heads will spin because we're going to hear things about certain individuals that people are <laughs> not going to believe that happened. And I, I can't wait happened. to see which way it goes. It's like, we can't tell. If it's going to go right or left at this point. Oh, I know which way it's going. I do too. Which way I mean, is it going? It's going right. <laughs> but I, I, the liberals are just going to explode. It's going to be crazy. And yeah. they're not going to accept it. Yeah, but, they're, they're going to think it's fake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They've been yeah. trained well. That's yeah. the problem. They've, they've been entrained to think everything that they aren't getting from CNN or MSNBC or whatever, or Fox even, is fake mm -hmm. news. And I can see why. You know, and then I look at it like this, because I have, I'm not like this hardcore Republican. I like, the only reason I would vote Republican is because of taxes, period. <laughs> because, and, but I can tell you that Mr. So-and-so has a lot of those same views. I'm very, there, his chart, he's got a Scorpio moon conjunct K2 baiting. Okay. I know him. Like, I know how he thinks. I know how he ticks. And I can tell you that what, with the transits, what's going on, we'll see. Like my fearless leader or Mueller? No, 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 Trump. Okay, fearless yeah. leader. <laughs> Trump. I don't know. I don't like to say his name. Sometimes I get nervous because people go crazy. The triggering, yeah, yeah. So it's and that's all not... everything we say is objective, and it's just 
but it's, it's sad. Like it's, it's actually crazy that you can't say like somebody's name without people going nuts. Well, do you see that it's in the charts too? Like, isn't that, yeah. is that part of this? Um, um, this is a scary year. This next two years is definitely a big shift. So. Wait, I, I'm gonna I have a question. fire extinguisher next to my bed now. <laughs> I'm going to take your lead. <laughs> Some, someone in the chat had did say that box wine boxes will, I said it would extinguish fire. Someone said to keep those next to that. So somebody's, uh, <laughs> I would, will say, when I, when I was thinking the world was coming to an end before, before he won, and I was really concerned, right? Because, I mean, extremely concerned, just hoping and praying, thinking that that woman was going to be right. I literally can say, the anxiety that I had at that moment was nothing compared. I mean, like that, this is nothing. This is peons. Like thinking about that, we would already be blown up. That's how I feel. It did seem like we were headed right for a Russian war right out of the gate. They're still trying to get it going. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, damn it, I forgot. Hang on. I'll think of it. Oh, Cliff, hi. You talked to Cliff a couple times now. Mm -hmm. And you talked about his webbot reports, and he had talked about an emotional event happening first quarter, early second okay. quarter. Like any time now, right? Yeah. And yeah. Did, well, my question to you is really, did you get any hits when he when you talked on things he brought up? What were the hits you got? You know? Yeah, and actually, he'll be on my show next. This is his new report. He'll be on Monday. I'm doing a show with him again. Okay, great. Okay. We're gonna have him on in probably in May. So I haven't read the new one yet. I'm going to say that what he's saying is stuff that I'm noticing. Like I'm noticing something with Australia. I'm going to ask him about this on the show. Oh, Australia screwed. Australia, well, it's not screwed, but Australia gave a lot of money to the Clinton Foundation. A lot of money. like Huge, yeah. $100 million or more, I think. I'm not really sure on the number, the amount, but I know it's millions of dollars. And the citizens are upset about that. And other countries are looking at, hey, why did we give, like Sweden, I think, or Norway, gave a hundred or, or, sorry, $10 million to the Clinton Foundation, things like that. And the citizens are like, what's going on here? Well, and just like I said about all the political stuff, about mm -hmm. the religion and everything, that is being hit in his things too. And that's, so once again, there's... Did he talk about the new report the last time he was on, or did he talk about the... The last I, one. It honestly, was a mix. So here's this is how what I how I am on with that stuff. So that's taking that coding and everything, and I didn't understand one hundred percent to talk. I really wanted to hear his outtake on life when it comes to the deeper stuff mm -hmm. because he's got so much knowledge that like <laughs> he's other, amazing. He's like, amazing. Oh my god! When he talks, like, I had to watch his shows sixteen times to li to understand two minutes of like what he was saying, you know, just because it's so advanced. So like how he thinks. I just wish I could was on that level. Um that these you could see specific things and that have happened and that have popped off. But I'm gonna tell you once again, this is how I feel. Like same thing with astrology. We're living in this matrix. Somebody's controlling us. Okay. So if we're on to too much things, they'll divert things, I believe. 100%. Like some of the crypto numbers were off. And I can tell you that because I'm into crypto now. Like the Litecoin one the other day? So are, so are we, Heidi. Is that what you mean? That $100,000 oh, okay. Litecoin? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, I am, I am, it, and now I've decided today because everybody's doing these blockchain times, I've decided in my opinion that effective this week, I've made the decision to make the actual time of birth and use the charts for this Bitcoin stuff and for Litecoin and for all these different charts to use the registered date when Bitcoin.org was registered. Why? Because oh, wow. think about, and I have the time, the domain address when it was on. Yes. Because think about idea. it. When you have a baby, okay. When you have a baby, the baby just doesn't go from birth to walking, right? It's still that baby. That's a milestone. It's like a transit there. You can't just make that baby come out and start walking. So just like Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you can't just say, okay, it had blockchain. Now this is the time of birth because of this. I thought about this and I was like, that doesn't make sense. So that's a transit, a particular thing. It already made, it was already an event. It was already there, the birth time, the birthday. 
it was there. You can't use that date as the transit. And now oh. all the stuff is making sense. <laughs> all right. Oh my God, I year. love this. So, so we got a rough year. A lot of ups and downs, okay? But after September, it will get a lot better. Yeah, we're, we're deep into the cryptos ourselves. Is that because 70% of the population will be killed by then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is that year that rough? The Georgia Guidestones are <laughs> oh, in the I'm, ki- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, so I don't think you answered my question, though. Which I, I know. Thought, I, I forgot what it was. About Cliff High. Oh, oh yeah. Did you get any hits? What did you? Your guts. Certain things, yeah. Uh, the little little things here and there were, ma- were matching, but I would say his were, I was going strictly to the crypto thing. So a couple of things were off, you know, that like some of the dates and times. And like I said, this shit's controlled. Just, I, you yeah, know. So yeah, I, yeah. Well, the whole Bitcoin dumping by that Japanese, by his name's Kobayashi too, which is kind of funny. Uh, he's a trustee for the Mt. Gox settlement. Mm-hmm. Mt. Gox was a crypto exchange that went belly up and there's been lawsuits, I guess. And there's been a trustee assigned. He got all the Bitcoin to sell and he dumped it all into the market. That's what, made the market drop right uh so that's what that that's the last thing and now they're talking about uh i forget what oh google's banned crypto ads today it's all it's that. it's like you watch bix we're right or mm-hmm. yeah, Jason, like you watch you watch Snip, awesome. you must watch snippy, snippy. no snippy. I, I found him yet joe jay snip four he's one of the three amigos with bix and cliff high and um i forgot what my point was yeah, I haven't. I've... He's, you like him. His mom's psychic. Really? Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's funny. She does. She ends up with the, the hits. She yeah, really does. Yeah. Well, intuitively, I'll say, um, intuitively, I'll say that I think, uh, see, I'm so like, I'm. Uh, once I hear everything's fake, like everything we are living is fake. I have to say, like, I think sometimes I, there's a part of me that I, you guys don't want to even hear this, I'm sure. Yes, we part do. That says, when I look at these charts of this crypto, it looks very similar to like certain establishments, certain other things. So you have to know that, like, maybe they wanted this to be the, I mean, we're just controlled. That's my opinion. <laughs> That's, the, we're living in a controlled system. So you can either take the tools and, utilize it or when did you come to this realization of us being controlled and this kind of prison experience we're having you know i've always felt it and then you know going on rex like project a lot you know and hearing and watching all those shows because I, I love rex i love rex you know, I, at first like i was stuck like, with the head in the sand too like there's no way they would do this way. you know there's no way that would happen there's no way this could be this way Mm-hmm. Then you know, adding up all the clues, and, and the only thing I believe is astrology. So my astrology, my charts, my dates, and I have to know, like, see where that birthday, that time came from, for me to even believe that. And I can say that, for me, just putting these patterns together in people's charts, seeing how their energy is this energy and this is that, it's just, it's sick. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like, and then I will send watch David Ike, this Saturn rings of Saturn, living it. Yes, and that hit me. And I, you know, I know David Ike goes on a lot of tangents about things, but what he said in that video, I, I that was spot on. Like that, there was some something to that, and I was just yeah, he's what? brought forth quite a lot of information. And for people that want to be down on David, you have to realize that he was bringing forth information. He totally destroyed his life when it was golden he was the golden boy um to bring forth some stuff i don't think he intentionally wanted to um ruin everything in his pursuit of bringing a sense of truth or a sense of another reality that's happening around us that we are entangled in and you know and now we're seeing the real the real stuff come out because look how Everybody thought Alex Jones was part of the opposite, whatever, you know, that whole nonsense. And look, Alex Jones is under fire. His, all his channels are getting shut down. Are they? Like, well, and my channel got just shut down. I got a strike. <gasps> are you serious? For a terms of service strike or community guidelines? Yeah. And now I can't live stream for three months. Start a second channel. Oh, my God. 
that to me, I'm not like I've worked so hard to get those freaking subscribers like and make be no, I'm not doing that. Like they will fix it. Mm. I will. They will fix it. What did I'm you not- say? We're talking about uh, the dude who picks flowers. Oh, you don't know our code yet. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't want. I'm scared <laughs> to say it. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I was playing some police scanners of an event <laughs> recently just happened <laughs> of a of a yes no not him yeah no um i was talking <laughs> that i was playing the police scanners from that event mm. <laughs> okay because i listened to them the entire time yeah there's there's fuckery afoot we we agree yeah it's everywhere Sick. it's it's hard to say what's really going on sometimes my friend I, I, Sarah yeah. of my county sent me a video, like a legit good video somebody made of that. And so I have him on board. He's blown away. Cool. Put it up on BitChute or Steam it or something. <gasps> Are you on Steam it, Heidi? No, I, I'm very not savvy with technology. We're lucky I'm Zooming. Oh. You can stream. <laughs> we should talk later if you want. We, you can stream live to Twitch. It's not too hard, and all your subs will come over. Just put up a small video. Hey, I'm going to stream on Twitch later. Twitch. I don't know what Twitch is. It's like Twitter TV. It's just another platform you can stream on. Yeah. You can stream on Periscope if you want. That makes me think of parasites. (laughs) Yes, right? Well, that's what you get when you stream there. You get energetic attachments for streaming. All right. Do we ever get any yeah, questions? You know what? Right. I will yeah. say this. I want to say, but what you said about Cliff High things, people aren't realizing like how many things are coming out about like people that aren't going and getting in trouble and indicted for a lot of things with the sex trafficking stuff that it's just getting thrown under the rug. There's a lot of people that are going down a lot. And I bet a lot of the bad stuff's going to be not brought up and they're going to get busted for fraud or money laundering or some other crap like that really hard it'll be harsh it diverts it from the real story and then they'll just brush the you know oh it's okay if you raped a couple kids we'll just forget about that (laughs) yeah no that's i that's you know and i think it'll be under the guys the public can't handle it because it's so fragile the snowflakes oh my god i know (laughs) i know yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. that's all right we'll just go into the criminal cases and search them all that's how i look (laughs) <laughs> all right let me ask if you have any questions please put them in chat for heidi otherwise we're getting close to wrapping this sucker up hey we have 33 people watching that's kind of masonic <laughs> that's my number i love 33 i see it everywhere me too that's funny did i i sent my email to you right yeah yeah i'm actually sending you my info right now okay i wonder if anyone wants to call in I can do a reading for somebody if you want. If they know their time, they have to know their time. This they don't have to call it. They just put it in the chat, month, day, year, city, location. Okay, Heidi will do readings if you guys want to, someone wants a reading. If it's okay with Nish, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh yeah, the, I'm down with it. You have to their time and city, AM or PM. Yeah, I'm you guys know the drill. I'm crazy, I'm gonna mute. The dog wants a, a reading. Ask her about the cards of truth and what she thinks about it. What are the cards of truth? I use the cards of truth. I have them on my software. That's the software I use for astrology. Um, I think they're very valid. I think they're great. And I highly recommend them. There you go. All right, here we go. Um, What do you want first, birthday? Yes, please. April 4th, 1983, 10.07 a.m. Sounds like that's she knows it or he whatever it doesn't matter I don't need to Thousand know. Oaks California and if you've had one from Heidi before <laughs> <laughs> don't let other people get a chance it's not like she never does this oh gosh this isn't surprising today because this is the trend of the day all right this person is a Gemini ascendant <clears throat> okay your moon is in Sagittarius. And your sun is in Pisces brevity. So that's my moon. Gemini ascendant with Rahu in the first house. You have the nodes in your first house. When you have the Rahu in your first house, 
there's a lot of seeking like for your life purpose. You constantly, constantly be thinking like, what am I supposed to be doing? It's a lot of like being a ex little extreme, you know, doing things a little, like you might have some enemies and stuff. You might have been a little rebellious <laughs> type of thing. You have issues in relationships, ton of them. You either want to be, you. oh gosh, and you have K2 conjunct moon. Okay, <laughs> and I was talking about this earlier. Okay, so you have this, oh, Yeah. it wasn't I? Yes. Okay, so you have, not only do you have Rahu in the first house, you have K2 conjunct moon. So Rahu in the first house in Mrigashira, you're always going to be searching for new details, new information for things to be doing, things to be, you know, getting into things for, it's, you're going to always feel unsettled, always. It's a lot of like, what am I supposed to be doing? What's going on here? And then issues in relationships, it, it will pan out with relationships too. You'll get into the wrong relationships with the wrong people. They drain you. They make you feel like, say you are on board for something you want to start up and you want to do this, this thing. Okay. So you want to become, I don't know, you want to be an astronaut. Okay. Just hypothetical. <laughs> and you'll get into relationships with people that are like, you cannot be an astronaut. There's no way. Or they will make suck the life out of you that make you can't do that. And that's what will happen. You also have K2 conjunct moon. So there's definitely some detaching in your life from emotionally that you can like, people can say you're kind of cold or, you know, there's, there was some probably trauma in your life that happened when you were younger that made you emotionally detach and you can do this quite well. So you're having a big transit coming up and I'm going to keep it kind of brief. You also have some really awesome skills with possibly investigating music, talent. There's all kinds of great things here. So you might like horses, you might be in the financing world type of thing, money, trading, all that stuff. You have a chart for that. Making money through marketing, trading, a swanee, making quick decisions, fast marketing stuff. But now it's online stuff, anything online. Um, engineer mind here, but somebody that can jump in and physically do things, do tasks. You could have some issues with some siblings, um, possibly an issue, some, some um, issues with the mother, the home life, the homeland. It could have been close with your mom, but you felt like you know she had stuff or health problems or something. There's just there's a lot of stuff going on here, so I got to keep. So, what card was that you just pulled, Heidi? It's a caring connection reverse. So, a breakup can be a breakup and ending oh. relationship, and then this card of contract. So, this is like something legal, you know. Mm -hmm. But on the end card, awesome things. This is the best freaking card in the deck, cornucopia. So, if you get rid of the trash, the cornucopia comes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> No matter this person, no matter what you have, how much money you have, whatever you have, you're still going to be searching for more. Oh man, the never ending quest. Think about, yeah. That was awesome. That was just quick. That's like me giving a readings with me are hour, like an hour long, but I do like- I know, but that wasn't even five minutes and that was really dipping into some yeah. serious stuff there. Just as a taste for people. Yeah. This, put, this person would be a good teacher, though, too. Good teacher. Was that still the first one you're on? Yeah. I put three. I put one or two more in there. If you'd like to do more. Okay, I'll do two more. Okay. Hopefully, it won't lock up again. It seemed to be when I was typing in Zoom chat, so I'm not going to do that anymore. There's always some sort of weird little glitch. Um, I think my laptop's overheating. To be honest, because I don't have the stand that it's usually on at home. But I don't really... So, yeah, real sorry. quick, August 10th, 1978. Oh, that's okay. That, there's two in one world. Never mind. August 10th, 1978. 1407. I can't Mobile. see the chat. 1407, I remember that. Mobile, Alabama. Mobile. Mobile, Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> And who was this for? Anonymous. Okay. I don't remember. All right. They will know their birthday. People know their birthday. Right. This person is a Scorpio rising, like me, honorata, same nakshatra. <clears throat> so, you, I'm sorry, guys. I've been talking for like 10 hours straight today, <gasps> losing the voice. Okay. So, honorata, very loyal, very passionate. Okay. Scorpio risings are they don't like to ask for help they see it as a weakness they're strong they're independent they're loyal to a fault 
um, issues in relationships, passionate. They get too passionate about things. They, you know, sex, very important for them type of stuff here going on. There's uh, everything's deep. Everything's intense. So, and if you don't have that with somebody and you have a debilitated Venus like me too, you would like, <laughs> you would like my, you would like my channel. If you're not subscribed, you should go subscribe to my channel. Um, you have Venus, Mars, and Rahu conjunct in Virgo. So this is like, this is interesting because Venus is good for money, good for getting nice things, good for um, things coming your way. But um, you know, I, whether this also is going to cause some issues. So I'm going to keep it like the Venusy stuff is always getting amplified with Rahu and then it's Mars. There's a lot of stuff going on with Mars, Venus, and Rahu. Rahu is what you're here to learn, lessons. It could be siblings too. Um, Venus, sex, money, um, feeling ins feeling secure, being nitpicky, getting annoyed at, in relationships. I don't know if this is a male or a female, but there's a lot of imbalances here. Like a crazy perfectionist, control freak in, in some levels. Like you want things a certain way. And there can be a lot of stuff that gets in the way. Moon, though, but then your moon, the way you think is definitely different. It's moon is in Swati, which is in all about in Libra, balance harmony <laughs> uh, so even though you have a lot of external things happening in your chart you really like to try to be balanced good for business and that is good for money that crazy conjunction i was saying earlier also you have mercury saturn using your creative self-expression but you're always going to have issues self-worry fear self-doubt of using that creative self-expression because saturn doesn't really like to be in leo so your career needs to be using your creativity your creative self-expression but then you're going to second guess things and doubt it's great for research great for analysts Diving into the things and figuring things out, great detectives. Um, and you could have been a little religious at some point, you know, in your life. We've had a rough few years. Lots of things have changed. We had big, big. You have the unlimited resources you need. An unlimited force of the universe is at your disposal. It's waiting for you to recognize and ignite your phenomenal powers that are eternally yours. Couldn't be a better card. Yes, I read that. <gasps> okay, the last one. That was awesome. Could you read the card again? Because I my oh, computer <laughs> died. Like two I'm, so, I'm sorry. You guys got to watch when I disappear or freeze up or something. <laughs> no, thanks. I put the air conditioning on, so maybe that will help. I don't know. Holy crap. It's like Seriously, a, that was like two minutes on that alone. I'm sorry. I'm so yeah, sorry. That was from Morgan. She, she, she self-identified. And once again, I was typing when it happened, so I'm not going to type in chat anymore. All right. So I'm not going to trust this birthday, so I'm going to give you like not a real, because 11 a.m., You that sounds like you asked, okay? Just my, just my opinion. You asked? Um, yeah, and you got like a, maybe a, a mom, your mom said, oh, around 11, okay? Uh oh. My mom said, oh, around 12, and it was 138. 10 minutes changes the stuff, you have to have it dead on. So I'll say something, at least I'll pull a card for you or something. What? I'm just talking to myself. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? what happened? What's going on? She's dousing. Oh. All right, this could be close. All right. All right, so this is another <laughs> intense card. Cancer ascendant with Rahu, and this could be the wrong time. So if this is the wrong time, you know that this reading is, if this, if this is 10 minutes off with your time, this reading is completely off. So if you don't like it, <laughs> just know that you could change your time. But Rahu and Mars conjunct in the first house. So you should listen to the first thing I said about the first person. I don't even know if you can rewind these, but issues with the relationships, power struggles, issues. Mars and Rahu, right now you're going through a serious change. Big shifts. You're getting real anxious, real irritable. You'll notice like the, the really getting heated up right now. Okay, also you're, you could be accident prone right now. You gotta be very cautious. Mars and Aslacia in the first house conjunct Rahu in Cancer. Mars doesn't like to be in Cancer. So this is, all, a lot of the times you'll struggle with this because this energy that has Mars where it doesn't like to be, so like the energy, the willpower, the assertiveness gets a little out of whack and it can turn into power 
issues, control issues, struggle with your own, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get too deep because you're a cancer moon. Fire and, and water. Yeah. You just, they don't even want to hear this right now. Okay. <laughs> just to be honest. Like you don't, you, you wouldn't want this public, like cancers are private. They don't want this, you know, long story short, if this is your time, you're going to go through a big change. It's a big shift in your life. So if you're in a bad relationship, they'll be removed. It's the time to change. Now it's time that if you're in a good, maybe if you're not, if you're single, somebody could come in. Yes. Now, you know, are they forever? Possible. But they also could be teaching you a lesson. But I'm sure in your life, you've had more than a few of those from relationships if this is your time. You also have a ton of creativity, crafty. This You could be famous. Like this is a person that could be famous if they, and very, um, very creative, this great speaker, magnetic as all can be, can hypnotize people. That's how this kind of chart works. Criticize things. You just know it's a good chart, strong chart, but you have issues with your relationships. But we'll just, yeah, it's relationships. Look, broken heart. Definitely something with relationships. Oh, man. She's saying that's all and correct. And you need to use your voice and speak up, <laughs> which I think you should be okay with doing that. But speak your truth. <clears throat> and if, if it's revert, maybe if you're speaking too much, you know, maybe simmer it down. But I never will judge if you want to simmer it up. <laughs> All right. And also, this, uh, you, you <laughs> might dismiss some shitty friends, just so you know. <laughs> there could be some bad friends. Or pick new friends that are better, better influences for you. Quit cra hanging out with the crackheads. Did they say anything? Uh, yeah, she said that was, she said, yup, yes, I do, LOL, smile, sounds like me. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. I don't judge. I have one of those charts too. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, alone, married once, left him, divorced. I have, a, I have a story for everything, so. Oh, girl, same here. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. So that, was that all three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, sweet. Well, that is not going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank I'm, you, Heidi, for doing those thank readings. Thank you so much. This has and been, for being here. Man, this was great. It's been fantastic. Hope you come back again. And um, I, we, we'd be happy to stream for you if you want to live stream sometime. Okay. Like if you get the urge, like, I got to be on YouTube right now. You know, yeah, I usually don't get those, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows? Maybe. Still like, how do we get out of this one? <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh man. Oh come oh. on, that's awesome. But, I but thank you, I do appreciate that. And one day I might hit, uh, might take advantage of that. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, next week on uh, next week's show. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to plug anything, or would you like to plug your no, channel? Just, or? Yeah, if you'd like to go see, you know, more go to my youtube channel channel 27 you can just put that in youtube and it should pop the up. links in the description and we put it in chat then yeah that's it and uh, if they want personal readings which i know you're backed up on so there's they... a 60 day wait now but right. if you go to my channel you can um go to my website from there however one of a kind by heidi.org and go on, and i will respond when i can do the reading in 60 days so i'm just a little slammed right now but Sweet. yeah all right. All right. Well, great. Uh, be sure to join us next week when our guest will be Eric Arneson, Reverend, the Reverend Eric Arneson uh, from My Alchemical Bromance podcast. So it's another podcast about magic. It's really interesting. He has some good guests. And uh, beer. And beer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Check him out. He's pretty awesome. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you all next week. Good night, everyone. Heidi, you stay. Are we off air? Not yet. <laughs> Shh. Oh. <laughs>